Hey everyone, this is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. So I want to talk with you about my upcoming book, also to the state of media and what's going on in Hollywood. This is a complicated discussion and um, let's just jump right in. I want to look at the news with you guys here. You can see it says several top editors at Penguin Random House accept buyout offers, layoffs underway. And if you don't know, it's essentially this is the biggest uh, publishing company in the USA. These are books, right? And the basic gist of it is that the media is, is changing. The way that we do things is, is changing. Um, you know, it's another headline. The old guard is out at Penguin Random House. And it's funny because when, when I look at this, I, I'm not quite sure how young people respond. Like, do young people read books anymore? It's, a, it's an honest question. I don't know. Uh, for me, I grew up reading books. Uh, for example, um, Stephen King Yet was, <laughs> was a hot book. Uh, it, we were all reading it in middle school, and there was like some crazy scenes, like the scary clown and stuff, and then a TV show came out. But we used to read uh, fiction uh, quite a bit, nonfiction too, etc. Um, but I don't know about young kids these days, and because one of the things that was, was um, in discussion in the articles of why we're firing all these editors is I guess the book industry is just not the same as, as what it used to be. Now, to be fair to people who do read, because I, I do think people do read, um, the reason why I say that is, for example, David Gogan's book, uh, Can't Hurt Me, um, it's like always on the, the top bestseller that's like, it's been like there for the last three years. Um, this is a, a, a book that's very, very popular and it's actually self-published, which is sort of the route I'm going uh, also. And, and to be really frank, David Gog, uh, Gogan's is an inspiration to me. I was like, oh my God, you could you know, write your own book and do your own thing. And, and his reasoning was is that um, if you're going to write a book about your life story, own your own life story. And I, David, I 100% agree. And if you guys don't know, um, I've already turned down uh, the New York Times had a couple of author, um, offers, and I've also fired my agent, which I'll talk about in a minute here. Um, the, the reason is because you can do it yourself. Here's another example. Um, the Silo Guy. Uh, actually, I think I think the book is called Burn or something like that. But if you don't know, there's a, there's a TV show called Silo, which has been absolutely fantastic, and it's based on a self-published stories um, uh, by this guy, Hugh Howie, which has been great. Um, I, I mentioned the, the agency thing is because um, it was funny because when, when, I, when I was young, you know, the... The, the dream was to, you know, be an independent artist and stuff like that and, you know, sign up the big agency. And I actually did. So this was my agency. It was um, Trident Media. Um, clients are like a John Stewart, uh, Stephen Colbert. You guys can see some of the lists. And um, the, even the Dune book, uh, Frank Herbert, uh, the, the, the family estate is, is signed with them. But, you know, ultimately, though, when you're writing a life story or if you just want to write fiction or whatever, um, being independent is, is worth quite a bit. And then just having control and your own voice. And when I was talking to my um, other uh, author friends slash wider friends, I was like 100% Chris, just stay independent and, and self-publish. And it's kind of funny because it reminds me of the appeal of, of YouTube and, and one of the regrets I have had in my life is I wish I had done YouTube years ago. Everybody told me to do it years ago. It's just at the time I was just like, had this dream of, you know, I'm going to be a professor and, and I'm going to, you know, go to Hollywood, these kind of things. And the world is changing and you have to adjust to what the world is giving you. And so I, I wanted to just talk with you about how the you know book publishing company firing uh, editors is just a representation of the changing media. Um, another example is, and, and this is more in the traditional sense of media, is, as you know, the Hollywood uh, writers are on strike. Now the actors are, are going on strike. And I don't think necessarily, quote, traditional things are, are going to change. Like, so, for example, the example I'm using here is Squid Game. Um, it's a fantastic show, and you still need, or I hope, uh, that there's still a, a need and a want for this kind of programming, like high-quality, scripted content, trained actors, right, well-planned out stuff, um, not just content on TikTok. But I don't know. The real reason what I mean by I don't know is, like, our young people these days, like, they don't really watch Squid Game. They just, like, want to do TikTok all day. <laughs> is that is that, that what they're watching? But I, I have a feeling, though, there's still going to be a need for you know like like a sort of a bigger budget or, or well-planned uh, out thing like as you guys know when i do this youtube i'm just chatting i'm not really you know scripting anything um but 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 i i i, I want to hope that there's still a world like a squid game um you know for example because when, when i was looking at the the writer strike uh and the actor strike here's an example um here um you know a lot of people don't know it and, and i'll read it in comments i think it's people who don't understand the industry or haven't thought about through the, uh thoroughly perhaps um, the average actor in Hollywood makes less than twenty-seven thousand dollars. It's not a lot of money. I, I don't explain it to you. Twenty-seven thousand uh, dollars in Los Angeles, <laughs> in LA, is definitely not a lot of money. Uh, let alone maybe anywhere in America these days. It's just not a lot. And you know, one of the things that that is is sort of the concern uh, is that you know AI is going to change everything, and it's it's sort of 
it goes back to the book publishing thing. I saw over why when I put it all together, I was like, oh my God, you know, the book industry is falling apart because people can now just sell publish. We don't need that anymore. And, and you could, you know, you can make the case that, you know, traditional media slash Hollywood is falling apart because now we can just be entertained uh, on YouTube, right? It's, it's different. Like, do people still need to go to the cinema? Uh, do we still want these kind of things? Now, my opinion, um, for example, my wife and I, we went to go see Mission Impossible uh, with, with Tom Cruise and it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I did a review on already, and, and and I hope that we don't lose these kind of, uh, you know, events. I would say like an event. It's fun to just get out on a date, go to a movie theater, et cetera. But this is very real. Um, with the uh, current situation that we're in with, with the writer strike and the Hollywood strike, uh, the actors, um, for example, the, I guess this weekend is going to be the Barbie movie and the um, Oppenheimer movie is going to be coming out. It's like a new Christopher Nolan movie. Um, I guess those are going to be the last, you know, really big blockbuster weekend of the summer, sort of whether it. Uh, how the, the media has been portraying. So I don't disagree um, because there's a lot of, you know, uh, how can I say, there's not enough content coming down the pipeline to keep the, the theaters full. And this could really, really hurt the movie theater, uh, movie theater chain industry if there's no new content, right? Because they need movies to play in the theaters. I guess theoretically they can play old catalog, but like, can you get people to come to the theater to go see Empire Strikes Back again or, or go see probably, uh, you know, Hunger Games would be for the young kids or Harry Potter, et cetera. Can you get them to come back to see uh, old content and i would say no probably people want to see uh, new stuff and, and again the point of what i'm trying to make with this is that media is changing and we're we're all going coming out of the pandemic so we're worried about right our pay is not enough for how much stuff costs and now companies are reevaluating. you know we got to cut spending and and this sort of is a representation we talk about the economy all the time on the channel where you know companies look at their they gotta look at their bottom line that's why i talk about so much of the channel like like if you you know, watch the channel that it's how only our revenue. No, you got to look at the bottom line, right? Like, are you making enough money to to, to stay in business? And if, if if the money just isn't there, if if the consumers just aren't buying tickets or they're not subscribing to your subscription service, you got to figure out what to do. You got to cut costs. Uh, are you going to raise prices? Like, for example, Netflix recently announced that uh, they're going to cut that nine ninety nine plan on the US and UK, and now it's like you got the six ninety nine with ads or fourteen ninety nine. Um, uh, without ads, right? So there's no more uh, a tier there. And then there was another announcement recently. I saw that Spotify um, raised their prices. It used to be like 9.99, and now it's like 10.99, and et cetera. So it, it, it is a changing media landscape to where I think the price of the more quote professional, we want to say, is going to go up, um, and, and there's going to be less of it because the 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 willingness of studios to take risks is no longer going to be there, which is kind of a sad thing um, because, like you know, for example. Uh, you could certainly make the case, um, this one, uh, Nimona was a big risk. It, it's um, What I mean by risk is uh, these days in Hollywood, I'm sure you guys know, everyone wants to make the sequel because it's safer. That's why you see Fast and Furious, uh, you know, Fast and Furious 25 or, you know, this is too short. It's going to be the Expendables uh, number four. I was looking at that. I think I put the movie poster on here. Um, yeah, I didn't put it on there, but it, it's uh, just trust me. <laughs> there's, a, there's a new Expendables movie uh, coming out as well, but... Um, you know, traditionally Hollywood has been, has been played a really, really safe because, you know, people know these old stars, they, they, they know that that series. And to get something new, which is a term about Nemode here, uh, is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, and, and you still want people to take the risk to, to put the money into said thing. Now, uh, the reason why Nemode is really uh, interesting is, um, if you don't know, this was actually a web comic. I actually read it, I think it was like 10 years ago, because at the time it was one of the hottest web comics. This is what it looked like. Um, he ultimately published it in a um, a combined little webcomic in, in a book, but I, I think this kid was like a junior in college when he was doing this thing. And I remember when I first read it, it, it the, the movie version is, is you know much more refined, of course, and and they have time to really fix up the editing, but the the, the raw essence of the story uh, is there. And kind of the thing that's inspiration to me, and I, and I want to get this to you guys, is because traditional media is changing, uh, you have more opportunity to have have a have a voice, right? And and you have more opportunity to choose sort of the niche. Uh, that makes sense uh, for you. Uh, I'll give you another example. So um, this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, I was thinking about this. Um, the Young Turks, who you guys may or may not know, the, the, I think they're the most popular um, news site on YouTube, or at least the longest running. I don't know if they're the most popular at the moment. Um, and in fact, um, uh, Jank went to my school. Um, there he is right here. Is a Jank. If you guys know, he's the guy in the middle there. Um, and uh, he's, he's about the same age as me. And he got his start, actually, at Cable Access TV. I was just kind of funny. I I I, I want to say the I don't remember the name of the show. But they they did a documentary called The Mad as Hell. Um, it's entertaining. Um, the, but the basic gist of it is it's again it's another commentary on how uh, the media landscape is is changing and, and we can you know have more and different voices uh, involved. 
Um, and, and one of the things that I, I want to share with you guys, like, for example, this is um, John from the Young Turks. I met them. I was in L.A. I was at a Bernie Sanders thing. I make no, you know, uh, secret of, like, who I like. I like Bernie Sanders. I have no problem with saying that. Um, but but I, I mentioned John is, is because I think one of the things that people don't realize is that people you see on YouTube, people you see on TV, et cetera, they're real people, right? Uh, they're real people. And one of the things that, that's all so interesting about when you meet people, they say, you know, you saw it on TV or YouTube or radio or whatever, and you meet them in person, it's always the fun comparison of like, are they the same uh, or not? And one of the things that, that I, you know, and write about in my book and to share with you guys, and I just really emphasize for you, is always be true to yourself and, and be yourself. What happens to a lot of people who are in the media space is they basically play a role uh, for, you know, for their audiences and it's not really them. And it gets really draining um, if, if you have to do that all the time. And so this is sort of, we're going back to the firing the editors of the book company and, and you know, the changing media landscape is that the longer you can stay independent and do your own thing and be in a position you can do your own thing, uh, you're going to live a much healthier and, and happy life. And so um, it's not that easy to be in that kind of position to say, go back to the actor situation to where most actors don't, you know, the, the freelance, it's a tough life. And, and, and it is. Um, but, but, but I always encourage you, no matter what you do in your life, it, it's, it's to do stay true to yourself. I think that's something that's really important. Um, the last thing I want to talk with you guys about here is, is kind of funny. I, I was thinking about this as, as, as well. It's sort of like, and this is the old Donald Trump, you know, um, headline you can see. It says, Donald Trump makes his, I can, I can say now, penis <laughs> campaign issue during um, two in 2016 uh, debate. And, and um, it, it's, it's funny because you, you, how can I say, we're in an environment to where because of this rise of sort of independent media or, or you know, YouTube, social media, et cetera. And, and Trump is, he's a, he's a genius. I don't know genius the right word, but he's, very successful at social media, that's a good way to say it, um, is that, you know, we're rewriting the rules of, of what is acceptable behavior or not. Um, when I was a kid, like presidential candidates talking about, you know, their, their genitals would have been really, really strange. And I think this would be, in my opinion, kind of more negative thing about where, I guess, there's no longer rules or, or gatekeepers of how we behave. I, I it's a complicated topic because, like, say, going back to the books, like in the past, if you wanted to write a book, you had to get a, approval of somebody, right? You got to get permission from someone to do it, and they have to select you at the agency. But now, you know, I can just write whatever, and literally, that's what I'm doing. And uh, if someone wants to read it, they can totally read it. You know, it's the same way with YouTube. I just turn on the camera, and like, if I want to talk, I can talk and have my own TV show. Basically, uh, it is a whole other world. But with that, I think there's a whole generation of people that say grow up. Indonesian Trump is an example that think that, oh, I can just say anything and it's okay. Um, and, and that's part of the stuff that I, that I do question about this particular um, world that we're in. And, and I'll give you another example. I was looking at this one, just for example, it, it, evidently, I guess when you would email Twitter to get a comment, something official comment, their official Twitter account would respond with a um, poop emoji. True story. <laughs> See right there. Uh, this was on uh, March 19th. Uh, press at twitter.com. Now auto responds with the, the poop emoji, and, and it, it yes, it's funny. I get it, guys. It's funny. I, I get it. It's funny, um, but it, but it's it, it's I I I'm just putting this out to you guys. So how can we go into this new era of media where there maybe isn't going to be any more gatekeepers? Yet also, how can we maintain high levels of of content? Be it I, I don't want to you know live in a world where we're dominated by TikTok, basically, which is people dancing, this is controlled by the Chinese government, and they want to just put you in, in, a, in a, a little of stupidity. I, I, I don't want that. And, and I can totally make, the, I, I totally get it as, like you say, you know, people can play out, say, mainstream media, like they use that phrase and say, like, oh, that's just all the narrative of, you know, set elites that control everything. So I so I do, I mean, I understand. I, I actually uh, do think the the idea of, of, of Twitter is a good one that where, you know, and, and even say YouTube, where just regular people can talk to each other about stuff. But, you know, this is where it gets tricky is, again, where's our sort of decorum? Uh, what kind of manners do we do we have toward each other? And, and something that I, I share with you guys, too. Um, yes, I make videos. Uh, I attack certain, you know, other people on YouTube. I totally do. Um, but there's, <laughs> I totally do. Um, but there's certain things that, that I don't do. Like, I don't just make stuff up. Uh, I, I also I never make comments about anyone's physical appearance and stuff like that. I just don't think it's appropriate. And, and this is... You know, there's certain things that, that are okay and certain things not okay. So I, I literally just say, hey, this is what the person said, that that kind of stuff. Um, and, and this is where it goes into the problem that we have today when you remove 
talking about the book editor, remove that. And then there's other people out there who are definitely not me, who are way willing to make fun of someone's appearance, to, you know, manipulate sort of things. You guys see what I'm saying? Like, like, like to just make stuff up basically, right? Or, or to use tons of foul language all day, every day. I mean, yes, they have a freedom to do so, but you you really cross the line. And, and this is sort of why a lot of people um, feel confused where they don't know what to believe anymore. And and one of the things that I think is so important when I you know talk to you guys about, say, finances, I would say, hey, guys, let's look at the um, you know company's financials, look at the actual numbers, and, and literally look at everything. And it's sad because we live in a world where we have a lot of audiences that are so used to TikTok where they can't even focus long enough to even understand like real numbers and they'll just rather go, oh, Chris, you're no fun. I don't look at all the numbers. I just want you to tell me you're gonna, you were going to get rich. So anyway, I, I know it's a long discussion. Um, I just want to share this with you. Uh, my book is coming out soon. It's going to address a lot of these things and it's been really fun. And um, I always appreciate you guys coming back for more. So thanks again. And I'll catch you next video.